It is Radiance Ban. Dyer's turn to ban. It is Radiance Ban. Dyer's turn to pick. Us morphling Avery. That's kind of a bold pickup. I don't know if I like it though. <laughs> Zero percent win rate. Mm, at this tournament, not so good. Yeah, but because you know he's a unique morphling player. Let's, yeah. Let's put it that way. This guy, he just pops off on this hero. When you have a true Morphling player, you know, there's fake Morphling players and there's okay. real Morphling players. And you think uh, because is a real Morphling Yeah, this guy's a true OG Morphling player. I mean, he has to be, right? Because it is his most played hero yep. by a long shot. Yep. And it's also one of his highest win rate heroes by a pretty decent margin as well. So, you know, if you're going to go out of this tournament, I mean, I feel like evil geniuses are playing a bit of their own style and they aren't necessarily adopting what some other teams are doing. And, you know, if you're going to be playing your potential final game of the tournament, why not go with the style that has gotten you this far in the first place? I also think there's a decent amount going for the Morphling pick here that in a lot of those other games did not exist. Like, I think EG should be kind of happy scaling in a weird way in this game. Like, I think this last pick, Underlord, is really hard for Liquid to deal with unless they get off to a very fast start and then the Ember is just going to chunk through the auras. If that doesn't happen, this hero makes Luna's game very hard. It kind of counteracts some of the aura. I mean, that goes both ways, but I feel like Underlord buffing up Morphling in this game is enough to go in and just start man fighting Liquid's cores you have a decent chance to win those fights late game, which is where Morphling shines. Because this hero is not really about the early game too much of the tempo. You have some chains playability, you know, versus the Ember. This matchup is always very nice. If you can throw that back onto Nisha here, you're going to be very happy. That's going to give you the extra disable. But of course, you are going up against Liquid. 0-7 Morphling versus their 100% win rate Beastmaster. No one has been able to defeat the Zai J Beast. Yeah. Just too I actually didn't even notice they got their hands on Beast. It just slips <laughs> that, through. That actually makes the, the lineup feel so much worse. But fortunately, we had some we have some great experts on our panel, and we heard specifically Faith Beyond said well, felt mean, like Evil Geniuses had a chance here. So we had some great experts plus Jack. I, true, 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 true. <laughs> but you know, Jack's uh, an adorable buffoon, so it works out. Always bounce. Uh, that is what Dota is about. Bouncing everything out here. And I think this EG lineup is a lot more bounced than last game, so hopefully we'll see some more action, some more late game scaling. There's no Alchemist in the game. That's already a good sign. You know, Beastmaster does not have an extra free spell. <laughs> that, that is a good point. You just yeah. have to do it the hard way with with ancient stackings and clearing through the camps with the axes. And he can't manifest gold out of absolutely nowhere, though sometimes it feels like axes kind of do that with the way that they are so damn good in lane and so free when it comes to the mana cost anyway. Maybe that's where the free spell comes in. I think the mana cost is basically free. I think it's another place where this Morphling pick can shine. Like, the panel's talking about range carries aren't too successful in the meta. A lot of these long range carries seem like they're very gankable. Morphling's not really a ranged hero in a lot of sense, right? This guy plays up in your face. He's very tanky, one of the tankiest heroes in the early game. And then he abuses regen almost better than any other safe lane in the game. So you're giving him stick charges here with the axes. If he gets to some early region item, perhaps, or just burying it out based off Panda's net worth, like is going to be able to stand out here and free farm. And this can become a matchup where eventually he has more base damage than your beast and starts to just overpower him. Sure. That aspect, I think, can be nice here for him, G. And if they start with him lane, they could even get some flowers, right? And then Borfling could use those super efficiently. Never got me flowers. My eye never got somebody else flowers today. Panda. Oh, that's going to be trouble. The leap comes through and Boxy secures the first blood. Big kill to get. And I feel like this is something that happens in a lot of the Zy Beast Master games. The pad lane just starts to rack up some kills and... Once you fall behind, this is a hero that accelerates really fast with the stacks. So you do not want to give this lane a lead. Really do not want to give them anything early here. It just gets them into the axe attack on the neutrals. Coming. Do you have some extra or reduction in this game between Pugna Ward? Dealing damage versus the magic and then Whisper dealing with the physical. The EG ball is going to be decent here. There's another question of do you want to bring Whisper to kind of counteract the beast Luna push when it happens for, Li for Liquid? And who gets there first, right? Do the auras come out between the Beastmaster to power up the Luna into the ball? Do the auras come out for Underlord to power up the Morphling into the ball? That's why these lanes matter a lot. You fall behind with the auras and you just get the Forceless objectives first. Your game's a lot easier. 
Yeah, and I'm not even convinced that the Underlord is going to be strong enough to stand up against that kind of push. That is a lot of magic damage on the side of Liquid. Are you kidding me? Back. Not the mark he intended to rip. I feel like that's better than the Maiden kill. Yeah, probably. I would genuinely take Glove of Haste off Morphling here plus the Courier over Maiden. He's going to have to walk the base anyway. Yeah, that is a slow, long walk for Maiden. And this is just time Zai gets the free fall. Oh, that is an arrow right there. And Nisha, he's going to go in for the dive here and try and collect this kill. Oh, thanks to Mr. Boxy. Might even get two for one. Yeah, now Panda scrambling into this fight, trying to help out his mid laner, but it's a bit too late. And he may not even be able to pick up the golden experience since he's going to be chased out of lane and probably killed as he's going to walk back into the two of them. Arrow lands again. Boxy off to a huge start here in this game, too. It was the lane that EG needed to go well for them, so the Storm can snowball with the Pugna help. Now it's just getting reversed. You're giving Nisha another great start on Ember Spirit. All right, Mr. All Around the World here is coming in to try and win a third lane from behind. Let's see if Boxy can land his third arrow. Oh, spots Matthew. Doesn't go for it there, though. A little bit of a, a surprise to Boxy, so he wasn't ready for it. It's just the Chad Morana build, too. Leveling arrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, you better hit him. over Starstorm. Yeah, I mean, you're either getting reported or you're getting a trophy. Question of how many you can land without too much setup in this game. I mean, you have Fortune's End on top and you have Chains in mid, so actually, it's not too bad here. But of course, Boxy does not need setup. Alfred in CS. 32 and 8, so he may be having another game where he's just rolling in the gold. His evil geniuses have had a hard time being able to stop him in this landing phase. Whisper taking a decent amount of damage, and Sania take an equal amount back. Oh, Whisper almost caught that one in his behind, and he's going to have to be bailed out a little bit here. The crep fight goes out, and Sania's low. Matthew will threaten Insania, and they get the kill. Thanks to Panda, who turns around, gets the frostbite he's out on the Boxy. Boxy's low. He has another arrow in two seconds, but Whisper, who hit in the trees, is going to be able to slip on by. No threat any longer. Oh, no, the arrow. It spots Whisper. Whisper. Oh. Stupendous. The Lotus. The fight for the Lotus. That's a big Lotus to get. It's going to rejuvenate him here, and it's going to take Boxy out of a lot of action for a while. I mean, he can stay up here and keep throwing arrows, but it's not as impactful as what he was doing mid. Radiant structures are fortified. However, I guess Nisha's got it under control here. Double damage plus catapult wave. Oh, yeah, he's got to get defense. back here fast. And he's still a five on C Smile as well. And we saw Anisha, I think it was like the last time we watched his Ember, he put a lot of damage on the mid tower. Yes, early over Corrosion, just right clicked it down. Yep. You hit Storm 6, this will dissuade the aggression, but he got half that tower. And that arrow eventually connects. I agree with Whisper, how Not indeed. even necessary. And Liquid playing another pretty decent laning phase here. So will be a lot of solo XP for Picaz. Something you always like to see on the Morphlings. Uh-oh. Fight for the Wisdom Rune. Oh, it's going to be awkward because there's going to be arrow. He leaps over it, but Matthew does manage to collect first. Boxy, he gave it all. He has no leap charges now. Can't even TP out because of the Frostbite. So gives them a little bit of bonus experience on top of that Wisdom Rune. It's a nice turn. Matthew strikes back. Boxy pays the true iron price. Boy, this Ember is big. He's big and no. if he gets big enough, that's where that chip damage starts to just punch through your defensive auras here and you're still just losing mid tower. <laughs> no one is coming to defend this. See Smile walking to base after jungle. I think this is just he's gone. Yeah, if you take the time to jungle like that, Nisha will punish you. Remember, he has Lunar Blessing at nighttime. Something else that has helped this push and helped the lanes here across the board for Liquid. Oh yeah, that's Global a good aura. Ain't off huge. That's where that Luna Beast lineup is deadly. Attack speed aura, damage aura. Second, you push the button for the ball to come together. The big ball. He is, but see smile. He's gonna put those levels to use now. He gets this kill on his eye. It'll be very big, but unfortunately, the one doesn't go up because okay. The stun doesn't last quite long enough. The disables weren't able to come in. The arrow, though, he should land on a C-Smile. Matthew, he can't help him out. And now they're being run down by Nisha on a second power rune. He's going to go to work. Underneath his tower, jumps over, tries to finish off Panda. Should be able to do it. A Frostbite, though, will delay him a little bit. But the axes come calling. Zai comes calling. And the whole Liquid crew comes calling for death in this bottom lane. Cannot ask for any better timing here for Liquid. Helm of the Dominator just completed. Push into the beast lane, force to carry out second tier one. 
Gonna go down without a fight here for EG. Mid lane, paying off, paying off big time. Yeah, this is scary stuff. When you talk about the snowball potential, when you said Beastmaster plus Luna, and you've got an Oracle behind it, you're already talking about a ball, and I feel like that ball was like a theoretical, like 15 to 25 minutes, super scary timing. It's nine minutes in, and towers are already falling. And these slights are gonna hurt, because you still have that global nighttime aura. That helps all these little moves from Nisha. Plus over corrosion. These small buffs add up. Just forcing EG out of areas. They do not have the support levels to combat the skirmish right now. And you also missed your opportunity to take these kill and fights with the Underlord. Like, Whisper's been sitting up top here with Vanguard. Normally where you want to dissuade those early fights with the Beastmaster lane, try and kill him back, slow down his pace. Sure. These timings are out the window. Now you're just going to have to play for the mid-late game here. Liquid are going to have a lot of room to operate. You can start stacking Ancients, which has already happened, in fact. I just want to go to work here. Yeah, and while he's doing that, he left his creep in the mid lane, which I think was kind of interesting. I'm not sure if it's just extra security for Nisha or extra scouting. Or extra farm for C-Smile. Plus or 100. Extra gold. Happy to take that as he was not getting much else on the map. Die. I'm sure he'll be okay with that trade-off, though. He's getting a lot more gold out of the jungle than C-Smile will. He's so farmed. This is what makes the Liquid Beastmaster so scary. They give him the farm priority. They believe the Beast is going to be carrying them in the later fights. Not something a lot of these other teams have been doing. I'm happy to believe in the Helm of the Overlord timings. The faster you get it, the stronger that push becomes. Or even the second orb, the Pipe, the Crimson, whatever you want to go. And we have seen Zai carry these games. 2-0 and 2, top of the net work chart. Push is scary. You also don't have some good turnaround save. Like, you have Decrep, but it can get purged here. There's a lot of magic damage follow from Liquid. So these roars, these chains and arrows, kind of just have to be strong enough to tank them. Look at that Oracle. Lots of junk. Marana ult as well to protect the Oracle. This is another one of those double save support duos that makes the storm jump very difficult. Look at that. Nisha actually ranking third in the average building damage in 10 minutes. Particularly impressive if you're not playing like Dragonite or something every game. Doing it with an Ember Spirit in this one does, yeah, 1.6k. Heavy lifting. 5k net worth lead, 14 liquid. And feels like they are getting serious pacing going on. They're going to bring the Beastmaster up to the top lane. For the last tier one. Or just tier one and. Oh, Sean, because it is daytime. It's 11 minutes. <laughs> It does feel like they're thinking about it soon. Maybe the one. last time for Evil Geniuses to put a halt to this liquid march. Gonna cut across here. The smoke's gonna break. He spawned Panda. He's gonna be slowed down. I mean, just a slight and an axe. He's pretty much dead already. And Whisper, he's gonna have to give up the ground to this tier one tower, knowing that the Primal Roar is still up. Plays a bit of distance away from the Beastmaster. Doesn't want to be caught without any backup. And it seems like evil geniuses are saying stall. No cores are coming to this lane. Whisper has backed out. The other two lanes are just solo cores pushing out and farming. Yeah, there's no way you're taking this fight. Your timings are going to have to be later on. You're going Lincoln's first on the morph lane. You need more storm items. You're just going to lack the damage again, especially in the double backline support so can save the cores. It's a formula that worked last game. Look at the Luna TP cancel. Little economy going your way. That's actually pretty nice with the uh, bottom lane being so aggressively yep. pushed out. Mickey's going to have to go, go through the portal, lock back from the portal into lane to catch the creeps. A significant amount of damage being done there. And you can play the rat game a little bit here if you're EG. Sure. Like the catch is not amazing for Liquid right now as their strength is in the group up. Dyer's top Smoke, Foxy, and Nisha. This is pretty much their best cast. Chain, chains and arrow is almost a guaranteed kill. Are going to chains? There's the arrow, oh, the, beams. the help of the beam to ensure it. Nice and played by Liquid as they manage the sandwich. Get a big kill. Whisper, maybe a second kill now as Foxy's gonna come out and help this one out too. Now, this guy's a little bit tankier, a little bit harder to kill for sure. Especially with the support behind him and more on its way because he's actually gonna join in on this. He comes to lane, I guess in part because the Luna rotated to the other side of the map, so. Maybe they can do something. We've got a dog. Not even stumble damage, no. Just hit the equal. Oh, plus 100 off the centaur, though. A little something going their way. Maybe they really want to feel this fight out where he gets the Ember Steel with the early chains. Something to play for. You will get a tower here. The cause is having an okay game. 
That's usually the case for this team. It's pretty hard to shut him down. But again, the question of what are you going to do about this Helm of the Ovo timing that is going to come out very fast here for Zai. He is rich. Radiant should look to them. They town. need something to connect here. They're trying to bait out an illusion rune. Nobody's going to show. Let's grab it. But Liquid all playing very defensively on their side of the map. So I don't know if they had a good whiff of this smoke that was happening. Or just. They're just getting better be efficiency. Like they're doing ancient farming with Luna right now. Mask of Madness Luna. Very fast ancient clear, especially at this point in the game. If it's gonna hit nighttime in 30 seconds, he will give the aura once again. Now they're stretching it. Really trying to dive deep for a kill on Insania. They won't get that, but they will get the creep once again. I mean, they're getting decent value out of this Helm of the Dominion. Yeah, what, they've got three times already? Still doesn't change the 5,000 net worth lead that you have on Liquid. I mean, it'd be 5,300. The good point, Avery. <laughs> Thank you. The good math. That's why I went to school. <laughs> All those years of school. I can do the quick Finally analytics. Finally, push the use. Uh, I guess it didn't help out being a player. Well, not everything can go your way. Two to nine. The game quieting down a bit. Pretty clear that he wanted to be able to get something, not going to be able to find it. And then every once in a while, we'll just get a slight change into arrow. Good hold there from the Decrepify. That's going to help out a lot. Right. With the Crimson Guard and the pullback in the freezing field. Ooh, there's the overstep. There's the move. Can you get the punish? The good punish is because is farming right now. He has Lincolns. He's hard to first and pick off on the map. If you can get another tier one here, you're very happy with that sequence for EG. Yeah, that'll definitely slow Liquid down a lot. Yeah, that's a big messed up by Nisha here. I mean, C-Smile was getting nothing in this game. You just handed him a big kill on a silver platter. These kills are worth a lot. That's an 800 gold kill for the team. You're down to 3k net worth difference. Just like that, right? Single kill into tower, into another power rune. Some momentum coming back their way. The cause going to TP top for this double range creep wave. Tower does die right though. That was the final tier one tower for evil geniuses. I mean, that was an undead tower for sure. Died long ago. <laughs> undead tower. Crimson finish for Whisper. This is kind of your big mid-game timing here for EG. Yeah, Matthew is playing very far forward, but always trusting in his supports to be able to bail him out. They're going to do just that. Not only bailing him out, but maybe getting the kill on Insania. Got to be careful of the now. He's going for those supports. Mickey is here as well, and the axe is from behind. Zai does manage to collect one. Two supports down. Whisper now being chased out as well, and there's no escape from this. He may be tanky, but Liquid have all the time in the world in this fight. And that's Golem for Zai. That Helm of the Overlord already finished. Might lose his courier, but he's got the bigger summons on his side. That's another big EHP boost here. You're gonna have to fight through. It took him a long time to kill this Oracle. Through the police, through the ulti. Eventually you get him, but then your supports are just in nowhere's land. And Crimson does not last forever. Like, you have to fire on this Crimson if you're EG, but you also have to get enough out of that window where the punish doesn't come back and haunt you. Just gonna be BKB rush for C-Smile here. I don't know what else you even go. I mean, I guess you could try and go work it and just deal with the Oracle on your own, but that sounds really risky as well. Kind of yeah. need a BKB to deal with the stuns and the chains in this game. Another smoke with this Crimson timing. To know Dyer's Do you have a successful scan on the Roshan? I mean, you can't get your other heroes here, though. Is this like a suicide smoke for EG? If a cause is so far, see Smile, I guess he can gate. Maybe you can get people here. Coming in. I'm over here. Going that was a bold oh gate. my god, that was a bold move. Holy cow. I mean, the part of the reason I think that ward <laughs> went up on the high ground from Matthew, and he immediately got dewarded, but it did give them a glimpse of what was waiting for C Smile on the other side of that gate. That's one of those moves that's so bold it works. It's incredible. That's gonna open up Roshan for EG, but how fast is this? Is it fast enough? And our Liquid just gonna give it to him? <laughs> You have the Helm of the Overlord timing here? No way, right? But they have Zai on the other side of the map pushing into a tier two. Yeah, he, he doesn't have a TP, here. so he can't get here. That TP died on his courier earlier, so he still has to fly it out. 
Maybe you forgot about it. Maybe they're just happy to try and take the trade, but that is Roshan for Storm Spear here. A big pickup, one of the best Aegis users of all time. The cause is closing in on Manta. Highest net worth on the game to the Morphling here. If you never get the stolen chains, it's going to be a huge deal. Still have locked out for this Ember before he gets to that PKB time. The cause, that was, that was so spiteful. <laughs> the slight went out, all the creeps are below half health, and he just denied every single one of them. Even after the Ember Spirit jumped away, those creeps were still denied by Bacaz. I mean, you gotta send a message. Trying to give Liquid as little as possible. Well, getting as much as possible for himself, heading to the Banta next item, and then looking at Scotty. Do you think Aghanim Scepter, uh, like, is that worthwhile against uh, Aluna? You just need more important items. Like, you really need the Scotty to be able to stick on people and have the tankiness to go in and absorb some damage because BKB is not going to protect you from everything anymore. Sure. You probably need BKB at some point in this game. Maybe you can get away with Lincoln's mana here, but uh, if you get stunned and just burst down by Luna Burst, that's pretty spooky. I do think Morphling has a decent matchup versus Luna. After the Scotty point, you can get to Butterfly, Scotty. Yeah, that's pretty terrifying here. Which is why it's so curious, right, that they decided to give up Roshan on the side of Liquid, I, I feel like you don't want this game stretching out, and whenever you give the enemy team Aegis, it is their choice to let the game stretch. Yes. Technically, EG control the tempo right now. They are getting out farmed on the map, and you know they want to find that fight, or at least find this Storm initiation. Perhaps they're waiting for Sea Smile's BKB. Very close. Tormentors will spawn. Gonna go for the Helm of the Overlord Dragon here. Not be able to bring it down. Thank you. Meanwhile, what you wouldn't do for an AL right now. Or, or a storm zip. That's a bold storm zip. <laughs> that would be a suicidal <laughs> storm zip, but it would be cool. Reign of Destiny once again goes to insane. Image. I mean, are you playing for a top three advantage or are you playing for a Reddit thread? You got to decide before the game starts. Why can't they be one in the same? They can't. You can only pick one. Oh, yeah. I guess we'll play for top three for Evil Geniuses. Plus 250. Need to bounce back in this series. Down one game against Team Liquid in this best of three. It's do or die for the next two. They've already made history by making top four at a major South America, but EG, they are a world-class team and they are definitely in the conversation. Being in that top three, let's see if they can prove it though. Jumping forward, C Smile gets the introduction onto Insania. Hello. Reign of Destiny. Hard to get these kills. This is a it's really utilized, but it's not easy. I mean, is this a fight? Is this not a fight? You still have Crimson. You're gonna pop it. Fight now. They're gonna pop the Eclipse. Trying to go for Whisper. Whisper getting low. Panda covering him. The stolen arrow. Quite enough. Nice arrow. Does land on the mid gang. The flank back. Trying to go through the rift. Oh, this is. Oh, this is crazy. They try and go through the gate, but they're denied. As Nisha jumps in. Whisper's gonna go for the TP out now, but the Lucent Beam lands on him. EG scrambling to get out. Oh no! The damage just enough. He has BKB here. He's he gonna no be able DP. to get out on his second life for sure, but using the Aegis like this, that is not what EG wanted. They were on their way to, like, if they could win that fight, boom, easy comeback. But now, very different, much darker story for EG. That also just feels bad the way that fight happened. That is not the place on the map where you want to take that fight. Yeah. It's way too deep in a corner by dire base. Liquid have all the vision. You're going on Oracle. I mean, you bait out some decent spells, but the chip damage is really starting to add up here. What happened to C Smile there? What happened to his stop? Some other heroes got changed. I think they just bailed on the idea. You need to call that Uber ahead of time. Showed up late. Now the score 4 to 14 with an 8,000 net worth lead for Team Liquid. With the pipe now complete on the Beastmaster, it feels like they they are definitely going to be go, go, go from here on out. You have Arcane Rune on C-Smile and you're closing in on Bacaz Scotty. Yeah, but... It's a way away, but... Can Stormfear do anything against this ball? Yeah, that's a big question. I mean, you saw his damage look so lackluster against the Oracle earlier. Oracle has caused him a lot of problems in these fights. Yeah. Feels like a lot of their mid game is predicated on magical damage, which fight two. They have that global aura. You see the aura. hawk. The hawk sees you. Whisper out of position. In a bit of trouble. Heaven's Halberd will protect him. 
Steal the upper. The arrow. Gotta watch out for that one. Fortunately, they managed to dance by that one. He doesn't need to jump. Jumps to the back line once again. He baits out the heroes. The two supports come forward, and then he nails them. Matthew, he's gonna be the first one to be cut down. Pops BKB now goes for the Crystal Maiden as well. Shark here tries to come in, help out, but instead he's arrow. Boxy lands another one. He does manage to You're jump right, away. I'm... Still had his BKB to work with, too. <laughs> it's like catching <laughs> Underlord out of position there. Does yeah. not have the full team with him. I mean, Pekaz is still 0 0 0. Gets another Helm of the Overlord Golem kill. Right here. We should note they used Oracle for that fight, and Roshan was not up, so Ichi are gonna get a fight without False Promise on the board. And you have double damage on Pekaz, but it's wearing out in one second. Gets another Helm of the Overlord kill. <laughs> Add it to the tally once again. This is the fight you have to win. With the BKB, the Primal Roar is out. The BKB, though, see Smile, he's gonna be fine. The heals come out from Matthew Panda with a beautiful freezing field. But BKB's on Liquid's side proved to be superior as they now push back against Liquid with a beautiful slight change on the two that allows Mickey to play clean up here. Yeah, you got the Oracle. Congratulations. But because he needs more help, he's got the Manta, gets rid of the chains, no arrow here, but they do have plenty of damage. Plays with the Slight, tries to waveform away. Liquid chasing after him. Another Slight chain, dodges it with the Slight. Whoa. Nice read from Bacaz. Ember Morphling God right there. I mean, at least he's putting on a show. Does find a kill in that, so gets himself on the board. Means up Oracle on the backside, but that's a costly fight because that's going to be Roshan here. As it will instantly spawn. But we need to They just don't care about the Morphling at all. They're just going straight for the support, straight for the back line. Pekaz doesn't protect his supports here. They just get instantly routed by Ember. And that's a big problem, right? He simultaneously needs to go and kill the Oracle, because it seems like he's the only one who can. But also protect your supports. It seems to be too much for one man to do alone. I think you have to take the formation fight if you're EG. I don't yeah. think you can let Nisha keep getting away with what he's getting away with. Like, your Scotty Morphling's the only thing that's threatening this Ember going in that deep. If he's not there, it's just a free-for-all. Watch this. Turns into the Ember, reads it, slights right as Nisha went for the slight chains. A little bit befuddled by that move, Mickey. Enjoying to see just some good Dota going on as Liquid. Probably very happy now at this point. 16,000 net worth lead. They may not know the number, but they certainly feel the power behind it as they are going to go for the high ground push. Scott, you Luna online. He just for four minutes here. You're in no rush. Just throw down those reins. Heal everybody up here. Force EG to jump you. Because there is no outspan here that's dissuading you too much. Yeah, it's just the glyph, and that is a limited resource, but it seems like that limit is good enough. Especially with the push coming in on the tier two. Plenty of time to work with this Aegis, so no rush on hitting the high ground. I do think this is a high ground. Do you have Blizzard Frenzy on top of everything? You want to force the action here. Yeah. Especially when Ringo of Beam wasted so much of his time. Oh no, there's no tier twos left. And they know that more place. They're gonna put him to double the buy. We think you don't have buyback. And they might just have the correct solution here, but it looks like oh an overstep from Nisha. And it comes out again! He lands on the C smile! A four snap trying to get him away. Oh. In the last second, jump, jump, jump! He's good. A pin holds in Mickey, but a Nisha buy back Nisha. Nisha, he wants to keep this going. He has 35 seconds to do some serious damage to ET. Maybe even knock him out if you can. Mickey's getting low to these storm jumps. You have to respect the fountain regen here. Nisha, he's gonna claim support by another arrow coming through. Four staff gets him out of the range bit. 20 seconds for Pakaz. How much can you get in 20 seconds right now? It might be megas. The... Mickey's back to full. Folks, for what? Absolutely nothing. Dropping fast as soon as the tier three is down, then the glades start bouncing around. They do have a glyph. They can't get the full set of ranks without a fight against the Morph Link, but it is still a four versus five. Do they care about the Morph? That's another question. You're gonna open up the Glaze bounces here. Maybe just all in. They gotta start taking that fight now. There's Ag Steel on the Luna. You're gonna reduce his damage output a lot. That's gonna help. Oh, Swordsman jumps in immediately, chained up. He has BKB though. He jumps. That's a little bit of mana to work with. They use the Primal Roar on the oh, He already morphed into strength though. So he's gonna be okay, especially with help with Decrepify. But even getting him low allows Liquid to go for the Megas. Slight chains once again, taking out the Puck. Now he's gonna fall. The cops low enough. Back to the boat. He goes. While Megas gonna be secured by Team Liquid. See, smile. Banda, because 
Mega's coming in, and Team Liquid showing absolutely no hesitation. From Mega's to Tier 4's to the throne. EG, you have to come up with a way to be able to stop this in a three versus five. There is Throw no nine, way they to just stop it. They say we cannot stop these Team Liquid ball. We cannot stop Team Liquid as they continue. Yet another run through the lower bracket. They have achieved top three and will be in the final day of ESL1 Berlin. Ah, what a dominating series from them. Ah. They had everything they want in this series. First pick both games. You, you have to choose what poison you're going to give this team. Is it the Alk? Is it the Dusa? Is it the...